I received a message which is a major insight into what is about to happen. Now this message contains something that needs to be read in context and I will provide an explanation at the end. It is absolutely critical that you listen to the whole message if you want to understand what the Lord is sharing with us. This is a gift. I see it as a gift. And it's also a major warning that all souls are now at the highest risk of being left behind. You want to make sure that you listen to the entire message and pay attention to the details. Now it is urgent as you will understand. So I don't have the time to do a full teaching on it. As I always say, the Word of God is your authority. Not me, not one message, not one line. Now, I do not know the day and the hour of the rapture. I'm simply sharing what I hear. So as I've invited, please listen to every word I say and stay until the end. The message I received on February 23rd, 2023 and 9 14 a.m worry not son i am with you right son that the war will start on tuesday a battle for the souls a cup of blood filled with honey a recompense the fruit of in parentheses thy labor O Babylon, for you have fallen, and how great is thy fall. Now hearken to my voice, son, for you have done well. The time of your departure is here. Listen to my words, for they are truth and understanding. For there is no guile in you. I have washed you clean with my blood. Fear nothing, for your redemption draweth nigh. In the month of Adar, destruction comes, and so does redemption. For salvation is of Zion. I taught you, I taught you all things, son. Fear not. The time is at hand. Reti retire now. I love you. Abba, Lord Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. So the message mentions a few very important things. The first is war. But this war is a battle for the souls. Then there is a mention of the cup of blood and honey. Also, we talk about thy labor. Then salvation, which is of Zion, Babylon, which is falling, then redemption, destruction, and finally departure. This leads us to Revelation 12. What the Lord is leading us to see is the understanding of the chapter 12 of Revelation, which is about the war, but it's also about the woman in labor. So what we're led to see here is an important story, which I'll kind of rush through it, but for you guys to understand, and we'll refer to Revelation 12 for the most part. So at the beginning of Revelation 12, we're presented with the woman in labor, but where is she? She is in heaven, okay? So this blue area represents heaven, and the green area represents the earth. So the woman is in heaven, as we know, and she is in labor. She's about to give birth to the child. That's Revelation 12. 12, 5, when she gives birth to the child. Now, the dragon is waiting, lurking. But this dragon is very important because we have to compare it. Later on, we will compare it with the same dragon of Revelation 13. But there's a major difference. Why? Because in Revelation 12, 3, it says that appear another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, but seven crowns. Whereas in Revelation 13.10, it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise out of, up out of the sea, 
having seven heads and ten horns, but upon his horns ten crowns. So the Revelation 12 dragon has only seven crowns, whereas the 13 beast has ten crowns, which means that in the Revelation 13, what we've added or is being added is the three uh, beast of the leopard, the bear, and the lion. Those three crowns are being added on, which means it's a fully formed, fully fi functional beast, which is run or led by the Antichrist. That's really important because the Revelation 13 talks about the full brunt, the full start, the complete in beginning of the tribulation. Whereas here, we're still somewhat before it. I really want you to understand that somehow Revelation 12 is telling us that there's something that happens, which is part of the tribulation, but it's before these four beasts are fully formed and emerge out of the sea. So what happens? As the woman gives birth to the child, okay, the child is taken directly to heaven to the throne of God, whereas the woman is fleeing or is beginning to escape to her place which is prepared now we'll see in a minute that because the dragon as the woman goes to the earth towards her place the child goes to heaven to the throne of god now the dragon is chasing after the child because the child is being taken to heaven and so as he goes into the or stays into the heaven's realm it's beginning or is uh, facing war in heaven with michael Okay, and that's the Revelation 12, 7, which means that as the woman goes back to her place on earth, the child is taken to the throne, the dragon goes chasing the child, but is com uh, confronted with a war with Michael in heaven. So this is that battle for the soul that we're, we're hearing in the message. And so what happens is that as the dragon loses the battle, and is cast down where? Cast down to earth. He also drags a third of the stars down to earth. So not only the dragon is cast down, that's Revelation 12, 9, with his angels, but also these angels are very likely represented by the third of these stars that he's dragging with them. So now the dragon has no more place in heaven there's no more place reserved for the dragon in heaven which is now cast down as we know from the matthew 1623 sequence which leads us to believe that this is going to happen very soon so this is where the redemption part comes in why because as the child is being taken to heaven in revelation 12 10 we now understand that salvation has come and the kingdom of our god as well as the power of our christ which means it, finally, this salvation is being established because the dragon is being cast out. Which means that now we talk about who those who overcame by what? By the blood of the Lamb. Okay, going back to the message. The word of the testimony. And they did not love their lives. So there's an establishment of the salvation in heaven as the war is ongoing and Satan is cast out. And finally, in Revelation 12.12, 12, we talk about two consequences a rejoicing for those who are in heaven and a woe for those who are in the earth and the sea why because now the tribulation is about to get started and this is what we're going to be seeing as the final step of this so what happens as the dragon is cast down and he's wroth he goes back and chases on earth the woman okay he goes after her and he goes after her uh towards where she's she's going to which is her place in the wilderness and so she is given wings in revelation 12 14 wings of an eagle to fly into her place where she's protected so the persecution extends and so which tells us the woman's in transit and finally arrives to her place as the dragon attacks her which that means that the dragon tries with the flood okay to persecute her that's revelation 12 14 and 16, but the earth, you can see the earth realm hops her with that. So as he fails in the attack to the woman, he then returns, and I move it over here, he then returns and starts the war with the seed. Now this war happens on earth. 
So we know this, that then will lead us to the Daniel 7 war. We know that it is going to give him uh, power to fight against the saints and prevail. So we understand that these are the saints, the seat remnants. Those are the ones that keep the command commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we can, we can talk about that. But what I want to point out is that eventually this beast that is cast down to earth rises up out of the sea. And the idea would be that it's out of the sea because it's cast out of heaven into the earth and the sea and then rises out and then it's fully formed as the Antichrist beast. So what we're seeing here is a relation between a war on earth, which is a result of a war in heaven. This war in heaven will have to happen first. All of this will have to happen first. Is the possibility of the rapture being part of this? I would I would certainly argue. So why? Because of the over overcamers, overcomers of Re Revelation 12, 11, and salvation mentioned in Revelation 12, 10. And most importantly, because of the rejoicing of Revelation 12, 12. This tells us, this tells us, okay, when you also look at Daniel 12, 12, that the rejoicing in heaven matches the blessed are those who uh, waited until the 1,335 days. Which ultimately means that what the Lord is pointing to is this war is not a war. It could well be manifested uh, at the same time. We don't know that. So the the pointing of time that we're getting is that we are in the time when this word is about to break out. But it is a spiritual war for the souls because we heard in the message is a battle for the souls first, which then will have repercussions on earth as a battle or a war which takes place on earth. So the point that I'm making is this. We're told that war is about to start. And what we're seeing is is about to start in March. Most likely, is this is the understanding. Not only that the war is about to start, but now we understand it is not necessarily the war on earth, but is the spiritual war for the souls. Now, while this has been going on for the past 2,000 years and more, we understand that this is the war of the end times for the souls. This explains, of course, the attacks that everybody's under, which will become intensified and dramatically more evident as we move forward into the next few days. Now, the correspondence will eventually be a war on Earth and it could be on Tuesday, but I am led to understand. My understanding is that it's not about the physical war. Yet it could be, but rather it's the spiritual war which overlap and coincide parallel with the spiritual, with the physical war. So I want you to pay attention to that. As always, I'm here not on my own merit. I'm just a servant of the Lord. What I hear is what I hear. You have to take it to the Holy Spirit in prayer. You have to discern. I'm capable of error. I will always admit that. But I am faithful to the Lord. I could have chosen not to publish this message. But I do things out of obedience. And we will know exactly what that means as we move forward. I'm here to remind you to go back to the Word of God and spend time in it. To be loving to each other. There's a lot of servants here. They're doing their absolute best to share with you what they hear, to share with you what they think, and to bring more souls into the kingdom. This is the time, as you've heard from this message, to focus on salvation, to focus on sharing the gospel. There's no more time for debate. We have no more time. I hope this video blessed you. This is an opportunity to share some meaningful constructive, positive, supportive, and loving comments to try together to understand more what this might be. As I said, there's a second part which I haven't even shared with you. I'll do my best effort if I can over the next day or so to bring that second part, which is really incredible, to the table as well. But in the meantime, I invite everybody to share your thoughts, your ideas, and certainly any message and confirmations you receive from the Holy Spirit. May the Lord Jesus bless you and protect you. Amen.